Now verse 12 of chapter 3. And he that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write him, or upon him, my new name. Not only will God put into a diamond your special name, but now he will make you as a pillar. A pillar is strength. It speaks of positioning. God is going to position you in his kingdom, and he'll write his name, his new name. And I looked at it, and I said, you know, I never pondered that before. What is God's new name that's now being reserved? We know him as Jehovah Jireh, all the different names of Jehovah. God has a name that he's going to write upon each pillar. Now, a pillar is one who stands in strength. Those who have supported the work of God, those who have stood by faithfully serving the Lord. So don't expect all of these wonderful things to be given if you haven't been faithful. If you haven't been serving God, if you haven't stood as a pillar of strength, what has made our life a joy are the faithful ones who are like pillars in the house of God. You can count on them. You don't have to beg or coax them. They're there as faithful as the sun rises every morning. And their name, God said, his name, he will write upon them. And then the last overcomer is verse 21 of chapter 3. To him that overcomes will I grant to him to sit with me in my throne. Now get this. We're going to sit with the Lord Jesus in his throne. And note, as he says, as I sat down with my father in his throne. That's a place of authority. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. We're not hearing what God's saying. Let's, let's really get serious. How many messages have you heard? I'm tired of preaching sermons. I will not preach sermons. I was at a seminary in Ukraine, and the poor gentleman that was, he was the dean of the, the seminary, the Pentecostal college, and uh, I started out, I used to preach sermons, but I don't preach sermons anymore. And he looked at me. Now they're teaching them how to do sermons. And he said, I, and I don't preach sermons anymore. So he stopped and looked at me as if I can't interpret this. I, or I didn't hear it right. And my English friends who were Ukrainian background nodded and said, that's what he said. So he had, had to interpret. And all the students sitting there, and they were saying, my his opening line, he's messing up our school. Five, first five minutes he's here. <laughs> And I then explained, we have so many sermons that people take scripture and they give good application. They're good, they're practical, but we need to hear a message from God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Not what I think, taking scripture, not putting things together as I perceive it or as I think it. I want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church in this hour. We're playing games. Let's get, let's get real. There's so much game playing in the church in North America. We need fire to come. We need the judgment of God to come. We need persecution to come. To purge us and to refine us and to bring us back to a brokenness and a humility before God that we will call upon the name of the Lord and seek Him with all of our heart. Yes, the Lord said, I'm going to do a fast work in righteousness. Book of Acts declares, God said, I will do a quick work in righteousness. In other words, he's going to do a lot of straightening up in a lot of hearts so fast. Why? He's going to get ready a people prepared for the Lord. We haven't got time to play our games. We haven't got time to hold another church service. We haven't got time just to do nice things. We've got to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in this hour. The problem is in North America, we don't want to hear what God is saying because it brings conviction. They'll drum you out of the court. Someone said when they drum you out of the court, get so far ahead that they think you're leading the parade. <laughs> I said, that's a good idea. How I many know people want things the way they want? They don't want to be too upset, too concerned, too fired up. Just leave us in a nice, comfortable position that we know Jesus is coming and we'll get ready. And, but where is fervency in spirit? That's right. We're to serve God. Fervent in spirit, on fire, when a 
a family came a few weeks ago, and they were out to the services. We were praying for their sister, Janet. The brother came up to me, and he said, oh, you got fire in your belly. I looked at him, and he said, yes, you got fire. Don't let anybody put out the fire. Keep the fire. Yeah. Even though there's snow on the roof, I'm here to tell you there's fire in the belly. Oh, we God, we're going to keep the fire burning until Jesus comes. We're going to do a lot of havoc to the kingdom of darkness. We're going to let them know that we're going to populate heaven. As our dear friend, our German evangelist, says they're going to plunder hell and populate heaven. And this is what God wants us to do. Win the lost at any cost. Reaching out to the lost. So, you know, when I realized what God is saying, and I looked at this and I said, Lord, you're trying to fire us up. And I have to admit, how many know, uh, there are times that we're not what we ought to be. We need to get fired up. I'm getting a fresh fire up. The old is going, but the new is coming. I want to get so fired up. And while I was doing so well, I thought this week I'd move. I said to my son, I'm not, your dad is not as spiritual as I thought I was. He said, what do you mean? I said, I had a frustrating week. Oh, everything that could go wrong went wrong. I had a case with my, everything in it, everything to support my leather case, $170 case. <laughs> a beautiful gift. And I had, there was my cell phone, the keys to the condo. Uh, there was all, there's an address book. There's a special taping of my songs. All these things were in the case. And uh, I was putting stuff in the car, and the dear lady was trying to help, and she put it on the hood of the car, and that's the last I saw. Oh. And I, I didn't realize I could get frustrated. And I got so frustrated, I yelled right out in the car. Oh, I yelled! I, I just thought, I said, well, I got that out. <laughs> then I thought, well, that wasn't so spiritual, was it? I said, well, it was pent up feeling, Lord. I tried to justify it. I should have said, oh, Jesus! I just yelled out a big guy. Now, most of you are so spiritual that you wouldn't relate to that. <laughs> and I said, you know, I can't believe that. Now, here is the pastor driving the car, so frustrated, that I yell out a good yell. And they said, you know, I should tell the saints that to help them. And I said, no, no, they would, they would be troubled by that because they think I'm so spiritual, I would never do that. <laughs> How many know? Here I am, flesh and blood. But he's, he's working on it. He's trying to get rid of the old so he can give me something new. So then I had to say, Lord, you know where it is. And I should rejoice. Because the postal department in Mississauga called because they lost in Toronto. They said, we've got your wallet here. And he knew what I was going to ask. He said, but no money in it. I just put money in. Good Canadian, almost as valuable as the American dollar, in my wallet. And they took it. I said, okay, Lord, they needed it. Hold the tie on. <laughs> and I said, Is all, are all my cards, and they mentioned all the cards that was there. And I looked at it, and I should have gotten happy. You know, and I, I really blew it again. Second time. If it wants bad enough, the second time. I, I should have said, thank you, Lord. I praise your name, Jesus. I've got my wallet back. I, I said, didn't work, Lord. I asked for the whole case. I asked nothing touched. Everything back. And I kind of the Holy Spirit said, you're the most grateful aren't you? And I said, well, Lord, then you, get real, you know how many know when you get real spiritual, you get soft voice. And I, I was like, well, Lord, I was really sort of expecting everything. But it's not over yet. Whoever took it through the case into the bushes, took the, all the money out, didn't even bother taking the valuable visa card, my birth certificate, my hospital card, everything that I had of identification. They, they would know whose wallet they stole, but uh, and they put it into the, the postal box. Isn't that kind of them? They bless their heart. Right? They, keep the money, keep the money. They threw it in the postal box, and, and so the lady went to collect the letters.